Hi ladies! Today we are going to be working on our Eco Learner badge and the best part about that is that we get to get outside. What a wonderful way to practice some social distancing and to get out into our public lands. Today's badge has three parts that we need to work on. We need to learn how to plan for going outdoors and we need to learn how to take care of nature and wildlife when we're outside and then how to make sure that we're protecting it for the future. So today we're going to start and do our Girl Scout Promise. Um, if you hold up your fingers and your sign. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help all people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. And I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to <laughs> respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, uh, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Okay, let's get started. All right, ladies, so the first part of planning to go outside is we need to figure out what we need to prepare for. So if you are going for a walk in the park or in your backyard, what are some things you might want to have with you? Do you think you need a first aid kit to go in your backyard? Probably not. But if you're going out for a hike in the woods, do you think you need a first aid kit? Probably. Some of the other things that you need to think about if you're going out <laughs> into a wildlife management area, figure out if you're going to bring trash pickers. If you're going out and doing a more intense hike, maybe away from your house, uh, there are some things that you need to consider. The first thing that you need to think about is where you're going. Uh, today I'm out at the Blue River Public Fishing and Hunting Area, which is a wildlife management area. So it's walk-in only. We can't bring our car on the hike. So we're going to take a couple extra things with us and I will go ahead and show you everything that we've got so you can see how we're being prepared. Okay, I want to go over the things that we have with us to prepare for our hike. So we've got a couple backpacks. Um, we've also got trash bags because we are going to pick up trash and a couple of these trash pickers so that we can pick up trash without touching it with our hands. Um, we've also got plenty of water or reusable stainless steel uh, bottles so that everybody stays hydrated. Do you think that it's important to stay hydrated when you're out walking around or climbing on stuff? Because I certainly do. We've got uh, hand wipes, just in case we get a little dirty. We've got some Lara bars for the little one. Um, they are wrapped in plastic, so, so uh, we will make sure that if she eats those, that we take those out. We've also got some reusable plastic um, snack bags. So this one's got goldfish, and this one has got a special treat because you can't do a Girl Scout event without some Girl Scout s'mores. Um, so those are our snacks that we've got just to keep us a little energized if we need it. Uh, because there's two adults going with us, we've got a first aid kit that's got like band-aids and antiseptic and those kind of things just in case we need it. We've also got a very nice pair of binoculars so that we can keep an eye out for birds and other wildlife out here. And then we've also got a knife with us. This is something that only adults should have or only uh, girls who have been trained on how to use it. But we've got it in case we get stuck in any situations that we need to get out of. And that's pretty much what we've got with us to go on our little hike today. Uh, we've also got a couple jackets. We've also got sunglasses and hats and jackets. Um, we've got sunscreen on. We've got uh, bug spray if we need it. So I think we're pretty well prepared to get out there for a little hike for a couple hours today. One of the things that you need to consider if you're going out into a park or into a wildlife management area or a state or federal park is what their rules and regulations are. So this is the sign for the Blue River public uh, fishing and hunting area that we're at today. And it goes through and talks about some of the things that are permitted and some of the special area regulations, but it also goes through the things that are prohibited. And these are the things that we need to make sure we're looking out for. Some of the things on the prohibited list is the littering, 
no tree or vegetation cutting, no disorderly behavior, no swimming, and pretty much taking care of the area. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more while we're out on the hike, but those are some things to consider in the particular area that you're going in. Some places might not allow you to have glass bottles. They might not allow you to have, you know, bikes or anything like that, or they'll tell you to stay on the trail, and that's what we need to do. What are some things that you girls think that you need to take out if you go out on a hike or on a walk uh, or out to the park or anything? Why don't you take some time and write a list of some things that uh, you might want to put in your pack and then we'll circle back to activity two when we get out on the trail. All right, bye. As we go, we are going to keep an eye out for what kind of signs of wildlife that we can find. Now girls, when you're out on your hike, you want to make sure you're keeping out for signs of nature. And see, there's a butterfly right there. Do you think your dog at home is wildlife? No, no. Wildlife is animals that live outside and don't rely on people to feed them or provide things for them. So when you're out on your hike, you want to make sure you're keeping out for signs of wildlife and for nature and bugs and all that kind of stuff because that's what makes it fun. You see something as simple as this little trail right here that's going through the grass? That's probably a game trail. As we're out on the trail, we are keeping our eye out for litter while trying to stay on the trail and we are picking up trash as we go and that's the responsible thing to do to take care of the world around us. All right, some fun things to look out for when you're out on the trail is like this here. That's green onion, that's wild green onion. And then look at these cute little flowers here. We're gonna leave those there, but how cool is that? See, wild green onion right there. Look at the bugs, guys. Watch out for stuff like this. It's a big old fire ant pile, okay? So while you're out on the trail, make sure you're looking where you're walking. All right, do you ladies see right there, right in the middle of my pinchers? That is some deer tracks. Do you think deer are wildlife, or do you think deer are like house pets? Yeah, they're wildlife. So keep an eye out for tracks like that, okay? When you're out on the trail, make sure you're looking up, not just down, because up is where you find butterflies and birds, some beautiful, beautiful scenery, new buds coming out, flowering trees, all that fun stuff. You see something that looks a lot like a branch or something, but it's actually a bone. So keep your eyes peeled. All right, ladies, here we are again. Hopefully you learned something from our little hike in the woods. And the yeah. third part of earning your eco learner badge is learning how to take care of nature around us. We are going to talk today about the leave no trace principle. According to the National Park Service, there are seven steps uh, to follow the leave no trace theory when you're in the park. So we're going to go over that today and learn how we can be respectful of the world around us while learning about it, checking out for signs of wildlife and all those cool things. The first principle is to plan ahead and prepare for your visit. So you want to know where you're going, you want to know the regulations and the rules of the park or the area that you're in. You want to prepare for the for extreme weather and potentially emergencies. So you want to know what sort of resources are around in case you get hurt or in case you get stuck and how you're going to get out, who you need to call. Uh, whether it's the ranger station or it's 911 or anything like that and also to visit in small groups so the best way to make sure that we are leaving no trace on our environment is to visit in small groups because the bigger the group the more likely you are to trample on things or to leave trash and to cause a disruption to the environment so the second part is to uh, travel and camp on durable surfaces, and that means maintained roads or trails. They could be dirt trails or gravel. They could be paved roads or paved campsites or gravel campsites. Um, and you want to camp at least 200 feet away from the banks of the rivers so that we don't cause erosion into the riverbed. The third part of the Leave No Trace principle is to dispose of your waste properly. Pack it in, pack it out. Anything you take in, you need to take out with you and make sure you're disposing of it properly. 
uh, in trash dumpsters or take it all the way out with you. Use the restroom facilities that the parks have available if they are available. If not, you need to make sure that you're being respectful, digging a hole, not leaving trash, all those kind of things. If you are camping and you're washing dishes outside or you're washing your hands outside, make sure that you use biodegradable soap and dump your used water in a wide area. So spread it out. Don't just dump it all in one spot and concentrate the soap uh, or the waste in that one area. So we also wanna leave what we find. So you can take lots of pictures, you can do drawings, even tracings or things like that, but don't uh, touch or move cultural structures or artifacts. You wanna leave rocks, plants, and other natural objects as you find them and avoid bringing in non-native species. Now, non-native species could be plants, they could be bugs, they could be animals. One of the big things if you're camping is to make sure that you're buying firewood or finding firewood from the area that you're in so you're not transporting bugs. Another thing is if you're on a boat or if you're fishing and in the waters, you wanna make sure that you're washing your boots and washing your boat, making sure that you're draining all the water so you don't uh, transport zebra mussels or any sort of invasive algae. Don't build anything out in the woods or dig trenches or anything because that all disrupts the natural environment. So the fifth part of leave no trace is to minimize your campfire impact. So campfires can cause a lasting impact to the environment. You wanna use a light stove and lanterns when possible. Use fire rings or the designated fire areas when fires are permitted. Keep fires small and only use down or dead wood. That means only use what you can break with your hands, not anything that you would need a hatchet or an ax or a chainsaw to get down. Make sure that you keep the fire small and when you're done with your fire, make sure that you're burning all the wood and coals to ash. Put it out completely, water, and then scatter or spread out the remains of the fire when they're cool. The sixth part of seven for Leave No Trace is to respect the wildlife. So you wanna observe wildlife from a distance, never feed them, never follow them. Store your food and trash securely, either hang it on hooks, hang it from a tree, get it up off the ground, uh, maybe away from your campsite to try to avoid bringing animals into your campsite. If you are taking pets with you, you need to make sure that your pets are on a leash, they are trained so that they're not gonna chase the wildlife. Uh, if they can't do that, then you should leave your pets at home. And avoid uh, wildlife during sensitive times like mating season, rutting, spawning, anything like that. Uh, also avoid nesting, raising their young in winter. You want to avoid them in the winter because food is scarce for them. So they're working really hard to find food to stay alive. And the seventh and last part of the leave no trace principles is to be considerate of other visitors. So that's be nice share the trails, be quiet so that you're not disrupting the sounds of nature. And also when you're taking a break or you're camping, make sure that you're off the trail so that you're not blocking the way for anybody else. So those are the seven principles of Leave No Trace according to the National Park Service. If you wanna learn a little bit more about this, go to nps.gov uh, to learn more about the National Park System. All right, ladies, so we've talked about all three principles to earn your EcoLearner badge, and now you have to do an activity. I know that with uh, social distancing or maybe shelter-in-place restrictions, you might not be able to get out and go very far, so you can do this as simple or as elaborate as you and your family want to be. So you are actually going to plan a little trip, a little outing outside, and then make it happen. So the first part of your activity for earning your Eco Learner badge is to figure out with your family or your caregivers where you wanna go. It can be your backyard, it can be a park, it can be a park system or a forest or enjoy some of our public lands. So you want to one, define where you're going. Two, you wanna look and check the weather and see if there's any extreme weather alerts or anything you should be concerned about. If the weather looks bad, don't go outside, but you wanna make sure that you're dressed appropriately, not too cold, not too hot. Make a list for the things that you wanna take with you in your pack or just pack a bag. So think about things like snacks and water, maybe a first aid kit, maybe you need a sweatshirt, maybe you need a blanket to sit on and have a picnic. Whatever you and your family decide you need for your outing to your backyard or to our public lands is what you need to take with you. And the next step is to actually go on your adventure. 
get outside, get some fresh air, look for signs of wildlife. So bugs, animals, birds, fish, and different plants and things like that. And always follow the leave no trace principles. Even if it's in your own backyard, you want to make sure that you're respecting nature around you. And lastly, for the requirements, we need you guys to take some pictures or show us that you went on your trip and have a great time. Enjoy getting outside. And once you do all of these things, you learn about how to to prepare, how to take care on your hike, how to look for wildlife. And once you actually go on your outing, then you've earned your Eco Learner Badge. So congratulations. Thank you so much for doing this. And uh, hopefully we'll get another one out to you soon. Thanks. Bye.